So look at the room around you right now. Look at the ceiling above you. How many of you know, have noticed the complexity of what's in this room? You've got a complex truss system, you've got HVAC systems, electrical routing, you've got some plumbing going on here, and who knows what's behind that wall over there? I guarantee there's a whole bunch of stuff going on there. The world is really complicated, and Greg, whoever he is, he said something really important earlier. He was talking about physics and the real world. The real world is complicated. Design and making things happens in the real world. It's hard. And humans, while we have incredible capacity to think and imagine and be creative, we're essentially biased dimensionality reducers. We can't handle that level of complexity. We, we have biases that make us think we can, but we really actually can't. So what happens when you design? We try to use little shortcuts. We try to use things that people have done before, or we don't solve the whole problem. So there's a lot of problems to be solved in the world that I believe generative AI is going to start solving. That's one thing. Second thing is, if any, who, who has ever used design software to design something in the world? OK, quite uh, an immense amount of you. That's surprising. Was it easy? No, it wasn't. Well, it's because design software is built to solve complex problems in this complex world. It's professional software. It's hard to use. And what do we use when we try to use that software? We use a trackpad, a mouse, a keyboard, maybe an electric, electric pencil if you're, if you're lucky, which is crazy. We've got these huge complicated ideas in our head, and there's this immensely complicated world that we're trying to model, and we're trying to compress it all down into something that we do on a keyboard and with a mouse. It's insane, right? But we've gotten used to it. I've never known anything different. That's going to change with generative AI. The ability for the systems to understand us at language level, at gesture level, at image level, at sketch level, at idea level. This is going to allow designers and creatives to start working at a pace and an ease that we've never seen before. And what this means is this technology becomes more accessible as a result. This is super exciting. We need more good design in the world. We need people to be able to think of the complexity that sits in the world and create designs that respond to that. So those are the two main ideas. Now, there's a kind of learning um, Greg didn't talk about, which is multimodal learning, which he talked about patterns and how AI learns patterns. AI with multimodal learning is learning patterns across different modes of information. It might be learning shapes, geometries, light, materials, function, all of these sort of things that are not necessarily language, right? But it can start learning those things. Now, a couple of things become possible when you can do this. So there's two big Big things that I'm excited about in the world of design. First off, the most pressing problem probably facing the world right now is climate change, right? And solving climate change is super non-trivial, right? When you're designing buildings, when you're building products, when you're building power systems, when you're building anything in the world, that has an effect on climate in some way, shape, or form. So if you're designing a building and you want to think about what's the full carbon life cycle of every little truck, every bit of material that arrived at that site, every design choice that I made, everything that's going to happen to that building after it's, op after it's opened and it's operated, buildings generate enormous amounts of carbon just while they're operated. This amount of concrete and steel that goes into a building is terrific. Designing around those problems is complex. And this is, this is a great thing. I, people sometimes come to me and say, but what if AI takes all the design jobs? And I go, there's an infinite number of design jobs out there. These problems are so hard that this is going to allow us to solve them. So I'm super excited about the ability of this kind of, this kind of technology to solve problems like that. The other kind of thing that I'm really excited about solving is something that I call responsive design. And by responsive design, I, I mean this notion that we think of design today as something that's static. You create the design, you make a blueprint, and somebody goes and makes it. The design was done, it's finished. But that isn't design. Anybody here who's a designer knows that a design is an idea. It's, a, it's an idea, it's a solution to a general problem. So what if in the future we encode designs, we're going to make a new kind of car, say, for example. We encode the design, the software helps us produce a first version of that car. As that car is being used, the data is being collected about that car, how it functions, everything about it, cost, carbon life cycle, energy, everything, and the car is constantly redesigning itself. 
right? It's taking that information, it's feeding it in because it understands the context of that original design problem. All of a sudden, we're going to have a world that will be rapidly improving itself and getting past all of these terrifically difficult barriers that sit in front of us today. So as you can tell, I'm super optimistic about the future.